Hello, welcome to my channel and to my first YouTube video. Today I'm going to be talking about a game called Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. It's a game I've found somewhat recently and that I absolutely love and I'm hoping that uh, other people will learn to enjoy it as well and take advantage of everything it can offer. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, uh, Cataclysm is an open source survival horror roguelike video game. It's uh, set in the nearish future. There are some futuristic aspects. I kind of think of it like the Fallout timeline right at the time the bombs fell. So there's some advanced technologies from our time period. Um, the world setting is during a apocalypse, or not a apocalypse, pretty much all the apocalypses happen simultaneously uh, from most popular fiction. There's uh, biological plagues, there's uh, zombie infestations, there's interdimensional invasions by demons, there's uh, spore-like uh, creatures that are taking over the planet, there's just a whole bunch of things. I mean, lab science run amok, uh, many different things. Um, it's very, very deep world, very, very vast. It's procedurally generated, so a random world each time. And what you're going to experience can vary quite a bit. Some of the initial steps can be the same, depending on what kind of a start you choose. But the game offers a ton of uh, different interface options and uh, different game start choices. So there's just tons and tons of variety. And it takes quite a while to really get a feel for everything that the game can offer. So I hope you do enjoy uh, what I'm going to show you today, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so let's get started. In this first video, I'd like to go over the installation options for the game. It is completely free, it's open source, and uh, what I think the best way to run the game and install it is through the launcher that has been developed for it. Uh, in the description below, I'll have links to both the launcher and uh, any other files that I think are relevant. So take a look down there so you can get an easy link to that info. Um, the launcher is what you see up on your screen here. I've just downloaded the launcher from the website that's in the link and it puts this icon on your desktop, the CDDA launcher. The first time you run the launcher, this is the screen that you're going to see. And for the moment, I'll just show you some of the basics about it. Uh, the initial main screen has got an installation directory. You can create and point it to whatever directory you'd like to have your game saved on. Uh, ignore the rest of this. This will show up here in a minute once we get the game installed to that location. Won't have access to these yet. Uh, I do recommend you leave it on graphics tiles and platform, either Windows 64-bit or 32, depending on your setup. And then the available builds is showing you all of the most recent experimental builds. So the game has stable releases that are done not very often. Uh, I would recommend you stick to the experimental builds. They stay very, very up to date. There's multiple releases per day sometimes. Occasionally a problem will sneak in with an update that might cause something to get broken, but you have the ability to roll back your uh, launcher to any of the previous 10 or so versions uh, if you need to. So for the most part, I haven't had too many problems just sticking to the updated uh, experimental releases. Um, usually when I start a game, I won't update until I finish that playthrough. Um, I try not to do updates in the midst of a game um, if things seem to be stable. But uh, otherwise, it gives you the ability to pick and choose uh, however you'd like. Um, so here it's showing you the details on the most recent builds, and you can scroll through the updates. You can see that on October 1st there were a number of updates. October 2nd has had a couple of updates already. So it's very commonly and quickly updated. Uh, and you can follow some of the progress on the GitHub site and on the forums. Um, but once you've got this set up for the initial installation, just hit Install Game. This will take a little bit of time to download the remaining files that are needed. Uh, the launcher itself is fairly small, but this is where it's going to go out and grab the actual main game installation files and get them installed into the location that you specified. So while this happens, I'll talk a little bit about some of the other options. Once the installation is finished, we're going to be able to go to some of these other tabs. Uh, backups, I tend not to use it, mainly because this is a roguelike and I like the permadeath feature. If I screw up and get killed, then I'm dead. And I just learn my lesson, try to figure out what went wrong and how to avoid it in the future, and then uh, start a new game. Mods is important. The game is heavily moddable, and you can pick and choose whatever mods you'd like to install. Some of them seem to be considered fairly standardized by the community and are commonly used in most games. Others, you can pick and choose to add flavor or make changes to your gameplay experience however you'd like. 
Sound packs is somewhat important as well. It's kind of like a graphics mod pack, except for it's just for the sounds that you're going to hear. Uh, there's one I recommend that I'll show you once the installation is finished. And settings I don't often need to go into. You can take a look in there. But uh, for the most part, we're going to leave that alone. So I do, like I said, heavily recommend you use this launcher. Um, it just makes things so much easier and faster for you to get the game updated to the newest uh, uh, experimental files and uh, get things running. All right, so it is updated, and now we have a launch game option. You can see now in this area that it is installed to the directory, which version is installed, the build number that's installed. So it's installed the most recent build, 6820. Um, no saves are currently listed in the game world because we haven't launched into it yet, but once you've got a save, it will list it here. It'll indicate the world and how many saves are associated with it. All right, let's take a look at these other options. Backups, I'm not going to worry about. You can play around with that if you'd like. I tend not to myself. Mods is important. So this mod list on this side is the installed mods section. This is the repository of other mods that are available. I'm going to go through this list just briefly and pair out a few things and update a few. Um, but otherwise, I'm just going to leave this for the most part alone. Now, note this is not the list of things that are actually going to be loaded into your game world. This is just the mods that will be available to your game world. So once you're in the game, you can pick and choose which of these you would like to use with whatever world you're creating. So I believe the only two things I want to update, I'm going to remove this stats through skills we're going to delete that and we're going to add stats through skills 4 and that'll just take a moment to update this particular mod allows your character as you gain skills in the game get better and better at the many various skills that are possible the stats your basic statistics that are associated with those skills have a tendency to also go up over time um, so it's a way of improving your base stats. Um, so I, I enjoy that particular benefit. Some people don't like it, but it really depends on just how comfortable you are with the game world and your knowledge of it. Uh, I think it makes things a little bit easier for newer players, and I recommend it. Um, I believe the rest of it, we're going to remove PK's reimagining and update it with PK's rebalancing latest. This is kind of an advanced mod. I like to play with it. It adds a lot of new information, new monsters, uh, rebalances a bunch of things. It tends to be a little harder, but it adds a ton of really cool new content. So once you've gotten used to the base game, you might want to take a look at that and add it into your game worlds. I think that's it for them. I'm going to go to sound packs now. And there's a few base sound packs. I just go with the chest hole sound pack. This is 72 megs, so it's going to take a moment to get this downloaded and installed. And it's pretty much what you would think it is as a sound pack. Um, once we're in-game, we're going to enable the chest hole sound pack, and it just modifies the in-game sounds and the music. Uh, good pack. I believe there's others out there that you can manually download and install and then choose from in-game as well. I haven't bothered too much with the sound packs. I enjoy the chest hole one, and it seems to get the job done for me. That's pretty much it for the startup settings. Uh, I don't usually change too much else from the launcher. After this, I mainly just use it for the updating the games, and uh, if I need to, I back up to a previous experimental version if I've run into a problem with the current one. Um, one thing to note, if you do update the game, each time you update it, you're going to need to go back into the mods folder and readjust the mods to whatever your preferable settings are, because updating the game basically resets these options. Uh, so just anytime you've done the experimental version update, just jump into those two tabs and make sure they're set the way you want them. All right, so the sound is almost done. So just a moment here, we'll be able to get into the game itself. All right, our sound pack installation is completed. We've got our mods set the way we want them, and everything's looking good on the startup screen. Let's go ahead and launch the game. And one of the first things you're going to notice is it's going to be a very tiny window on most modern monitors. It depends a bit on your desktop resolution and monitor settings. I run my monitor at uh, 1920 by 1080, so this is the starting screen you're going to get. Don't freak out about it. You're not able to drag it or expand it, but we're going to fix that here as one of our first things. So. The menu system is very basic. This is a text-based game, but we're going to be using a tile set once we get into the game that will improve the graphics quite a bit and makes it a little more accessible to most people. So to move around in the menu system, a couple of very important things to note. 
You can use the arrow keys, which I'm using currently. You can't see that, but that's why that option is moving left to right. Uh, you can't use your mouse in the menu system. This is a keyboard driven game. The mouse can be used once we're in game to point at things and get a tooltip kind of a pop up information, but you can't actually click to do anything. So get used to using your keyboard controls. New game, fairly obvious. We'll get to that in just a moment. Load is obvious. World is where we're going to go to set up our initial game world. A lot of different menu options and settings we can choose to vary our game experience. But for the moment, our most important thing is to go into settings. I'm pressing the enter key to pick the menu option and a new menu option has appeared above it. Then again, I can use the arrow keys to go back and forth. I can use the up and down arrow keys to move from settings up to that options menu as well. So initially the arrow keys are your primary method of moving between the menus. Um, next, we're gonna go to the options menu and this is the main menu options so a lot of things you can do in here i'll scroll down through this list real quick so you can just kind of get an idea of the number of things that you can use to vary your gameplay experience the only thing we're going to choose on this first screen is our sound pack we're going to change it by pressing the enter key and that cycles it to the next available choice chest hole is the one that we're going to tell it to use i'm going to turn down the music volume i can't remember exactly what setting is going to be good so uh, hopefully this will work. We're going to lower this as well down to about 60 and we'll see how that balance works. All right, the rest of this we're going to leave the same for now. A lot of things you can do in here. You can kind of go through and most of them are fairly obvious. But next we're going to use the arrow, or I'm sorry, we're going to use the tab key to move over to the next main interface screen. Tab is another way of moving between menu options. And then I'll tell you a third one that stymies just about everybody when they start trying to move through these menus. The greater than, lesser than options. The little solid or pointy arrows on your keyboard, the comma and uh, period keys uh, with the shift. Those are also ways of moving through menus. So arrow keys, tab, and then the greater than, lesser than symbols. Just remember that because in a little bit, you're gonna kind of get stuck on a menu and not know how to proceed unless you know about that greater than, lesser than. All right, so in this particular menu, you can change these to your preference, temperature units, speed units, whatever is good in your local area, time format. I like the military time format myself, so we'll switch that over. And most of the rest of this, we're not gonna mess with. Graphics, all right, this is kind of the important one. So two things we're gonna change here. First is terminal width. This is the width of the screen. If you'll note above up here, or the terminal width is currently set to 80 and it tells you the window will be 640 pixels wide with the 80 value. So we're going to increase this to a larger number obviously. So I would recommend if you run the same resolution as I do that you change this to 240. So 200 and 40. All right. And if you look up here the window will be 1920 pixels wide. So that's perfect. And then for the height, we're gonna change it on mine to 67. And the reason we pick 67 should be fairly obvious. It's 1072 pixels. Now it won't go to 1080 exactly just from the way the uh, graphic system works. If I try to go to 68, you'll notice it says 1088 instead of 1080. So 67 is gonna be the best option if you're running at the same resolution I am. Obviously, if you're running an alternate resolution, just find whichever works best for you for these two numbers. All right, next we're gonna move down again and choose tile set. We're gonna switch this by using the arrow keys. A Bunch of them are listed here. I haven't tried all of them. Some of them are better than others and you can feel free to modify them and check out which ones you want. I'm gonna use chest hole 32 initially. I think this is a nice base tile set. Gives a good clean image and it has most all of the objects uh, updated to the tile set. Um, so there are a few other ones that I may play with in a future installment of a video, uh, just to kind of give you some variety. But you can easily change this, exit your game, restart it, and then see what the new one looks like. The rest of this we are going to leave the same except down here, make sure that you set this however you'd like it. I prefer to set it on windowed borderless mode. That way I can move my mouse, mouse around between my various monitors without any problem and just pick whatever display you've got set up. All right. So that's all we need to do there. And that's really the last thing. I don't often use the debug or the world defaults options. So from here, I'm just going to hit escape say yes to save the changes so i can toggle back and forth whatever one's highlighted or brighter color is the one that's selected so that would be yes we're going to say yes and press enter all right 
Now that we're back out to the main menu, I'm actually going to close out of the game for a moment. And then I'm going to relaunch it. And obviously what we're doing is just allowing those changes to take effect so that it will load in the new graphic settings. And here we go. A lot of changes. All right. You can hear our sound pack background music going on there. And I might need to lower that. I have to check volume levels and see how that sounds. Uh, same menu options we had before. So now it's using the full width and height of the monitor. So it looks much better. So the next thing we're going to do is go into a world option. Before you go create a character, you have to create a world to place them in. So we're going to say create world. And this is the world setup screen. So this very first window, the world mods, is three different tabs. There's a default tab where it's listing our currently installed mod packs, a blacklist, meaning things you want to remove from the game, and a balance section. These are all basic mod types, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. This is the mod load order. Um, actually, this is the list of available mods. This is what's installed. So. What we're going to be doing is highlighting whichever ones we want, pressing enter, and that'll move the mod over to this side. And then these will be the ones that load when you actually launch your game. So from the default, we're just going to go through and pick a couple of base ones that I think are useful um, and that I like in my initial games. Uh, we're going to go with Ice Coons Arsenal. Some of the mods you'll see down here have different information. So this says for gun nuts, don't have enough near future firearms in your life, add this mod today. So this will give some uh, slightly futuristic uh, modded weaponry to the game. I like the uh, additions that it makes. We're also going to do medieval and historical content. That makes for some fun things like the suits of armor uh, laying around with uh, medieval weaponry that are pretty entertaining to use. We're going to do more survival tools. This is mostly uh, outdoorsy type stuff, but it, it adds a lot to the game. And we're not going to do PK's rebalancing in this particular playthrough. I'm not going to mess with most of the building mods. They add some complexity and are still in development, some of them, and I'll occasionally get some errors that'll pop up. Uh, we will do folding parts, tanks, and vehicles. And you can see all I'm doing is highlighting them and pressing the enter key, which is then moving them to the other side. I can press the tab key to move between these three menu options, and the greater than symbol moves between the main windows. Say no to that and back up again here. All right. Okay. So left and right arrow keys actually move between these two lists, the mod list and the mod load order. So we can then scroll down and see which mods have been installed. So I'm done with the default section. I'm going to go to the blacklist section now. And you can see this turns off certain things. If you don't want to play with uh, religious texts like uh, the copies of the Bible and Quran and other religious uh, documents, you can remove those. You can remove any of these types of things from the game if you'd rather not play with them in. And then again, you can also remove some of the monsters. So if you don't like the acid zombies in the game and prefer not to play with them in it, you can just put this into the mod load order and it'll remove acid zombies. They're pretty tough. I'm going to leave them in so you can see how bad they are in my playthrough. I play with pretty much everything on. Be careful with this one. If you pick no monsters, it means no monsters. No zombies, no monsters of any kind. The only game, the only thing you'll see in the game world is wildlife. Dogs and moose and things like that. There won't be any kind of dangerous monsters. So if you're just wanting to learn kind of the crafting elements or just want to kind of explore around the world, you might pick this option initially uh, just to kind of take a look around and learn a few things about the interface. But definitely don't play with this if you're intending to actually have any kind of a fun or a challenge. All right, so we're not going to do anything with the blacklist, so let's move over to the balance section. This adds some additional things to the game, like uh, classes and scenarios mod. This increases or adds new classes and scenarios while rebalancing some existing ones. I'm going to go ahead and take that, and I'm not going to do the roguelike. Disable NPC needs is already in. Filthy clothing is already in. Prevent zombie revivication. So in the base game, you when you kill quote unquote kill a zombie or knock it down you have to actually permanently destroy it it's a second step so once you've killed it you step on its body and you can either butcher it or burn it or a whole bunch of different choices but basically you have to 
intentionally destroy it um, to basically smash the brain and keep it from getting back up again. If you don't do that and you wander away and then come back a little bit later, after a certain period of time the monster or the zombie will get back up again and start wandering around. Simplified nutrition's already in. Uh, I think most people actually use this. The nutrition system can be pretty finicky. I don't often play with it on so I can't talk a lot about it, but uh, you can test it or take it out your, to, however you'd like. Uh, stats through skills we're going to add in, and that's pretty much it. Alright, now we're going to press the greater than key to move over to world options. This is where you can set some of the basic parameters of your game world. We've got the size of the cities, city spacing, fairly obvious. You'll get a feel for how big a city is when you get into the game. City spacing is how far apart the cities are generated in a general sense. Scaling factor, item scaling, pretty much what they seem to be. Um, you can increase or decrease them to increase or decrease uh, how quickly items spawn into the game and uh, spawn rate of monsters. Um, I'm going to leave all this default for this first game. Monster speed, monster resilience, I'm going to leave the default, but you can modify those to suit whatever your playstyle is. A um, lot of different choices in here. I'm really not going to change much. Um, not going to play with Wander Spawns for this first one. And I think I'll leave... Well, we'll pick a static NPC, but we'll leave random ones off. Um, they take a lot of extra effort and work. They're a lot of fun to play with, but uh, they take a bit of knowledge and information to really use them effectively. So we'll just have a few NPCs that are generated by the game initially, but no random ones will be appearing out in the world. And we're not going to play with the Z levels, and I think we're good to go. Alright, so we're moving over to the last option. And again, I'm using the greater than, less than symbols to move between these menu choices. Alright, from here, we can either name our world, or we can hit the asterisk symbol to have it pick a random name. And you can just keep hitting it in order to pick whatever one you want. So, let's go with Cheyenne. So our world name is going to be Cheyenne. We're going to hit tab again. It asks if we're finished. We're going to highlight yes and press enter. Alright, now you can see on our screen here, Cheyenne has been created. There are currently zero save games within that game world. You can create multiple worlds, and then when you create a character, you indicate which game world you'd like them to inhabit. And then it will indicate that on the world's information screen. So, I'm going to hit Escape to get back to the main menu. We're going to go to New Game. And you can choose a few options here. A random character. Game will create one for you, and you can then modify its settings if you'd like. A preset character, which I don't have any created yet. And a custom character, meaning you're going to go in and build one of your own. So, I'm actually going to stop the recording right here for a moment and check a few things, and then we'll continue with character creation. Might be a separate video. I'll have to check on the length and see how things are going. Um, so, stay tuned. I hope you're enjoying the information I'm providing for you. And uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will be back with a few more here shortly. Thank you.